<laughs> so, I'm seeing a lot of black and white and uh, film grain textures. And that is the intro to the game. Um, this is the only scene in the game which you don't get repeated to you, as we'll uh, see once we get further in. Alice! <laughs> Was this made by the uh, guy who made a uh, what's it called um what the wandering soul stealing island of Quan Chi or no, whatever it was? No, there is two and, uh, different people, and that is not the individual who made uh, uh who made that. This is from uh, Haruhiko Shono. Uh, he did this game. He did a game called L Zone, which I'll look at later, and Gadget, which is probably his most famous game. Uh, Gadget's actually being re-released on the iPhone some reason you can get it on there if you if you need to he's called the uh, one of the most influential people in Japan in forms of making this sort of cyber game he also did like cool video uh, visualizations and graphical sort of deals and then he went on to do the uh, CG for the uh, 2004 film cash turn which was the uh, adaption of the manga of the same name and this is Alice, Interactive Museum. Yeah, in terms of the visuals, it seems pretty uh, nice so far. Like, it's relatively basic, but there are a lot of little touches, like the feet moving behind the doors that just aren't there. That's a really nice, creepy touch. Yes, this one is from 1991, so hmm. uh, keep that in mind. So, uh, with that in mind, this is really good looking. Yes, uh, I c really, there isn't much comparison. There's uh, that Starship Warlock is the only contemporary I can immediately think of. And here we are, in the uh, artistic uh, residence of the actual person's art, uh, Kuniyoshi Keneko. He, uh, he's an artist from Japan, and the majority of the actual artwork in this game is his. I'm not quite sure what the deal was specifically, but essentially they mixed the story of Alice, i.e. that is Alice in Wonderland, while also combining it with very early 90s CG, and finally the art of this uh, individual Japanese artist, uh, Kuniyoshi Kaneko. And the start of the game, you get to wander around his, uh, his house, basically. You just get to look at things, click things, it's not particularly interactive this early bit. You can just click things and look at things. There's no puzzles to this be... This pretty nice. The resolution's pretty good and everything. It's 640 yeah. by 480 with some... Uh, yeah, the, the actual colors are pretty oh, good. Man. Check out that copy of the pajama game up there. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I mean, considering what they were working with, this is pretty impressive. You don't, not, you don't only get a copy of the pajama game, but you get to listen to it. Just get it right. There we go. I like that portable record yeah, I like player. that. You that, get to, that is pretty neat. You get mm -hmm. to listen to this music. Um, now this game is made in a Macro Mind Director, which is the earliest precursor of, well, Macromedia Director followed by Adobe Director. So it suffers from a big problem where sound can't really play when you're not... It basically disables sound constantly whenever you move around because it can only play sound in an instance of whatever block the sound is from. So it can get a little choppy with the music, but it's not really the game's fault. It's just a limitation of the uh, functions of the game here. I have actually attempted to make things with the last Adobe version of Director, and I can vouch for the limitations. Yes, and you can imagine the limitations in 1991. <laughs> and this is the fish. Um, yeah, most of the uh, weird stuff happens in the game proper, but the fish is, uh, well, here. And there's a few other things you can do. You can hit the light switch, which will turn this TV on, but we won't do that yet. There's one more. I think we can trigger a butterfly, but I can't quite remember how to do that. If anyone can... Was it the box? Oh, there. No, oh, there's a cup, and then... Oh, we're in the cup. So... Uh, you go, to begin the game proper, you click the rabbit here, 
which summons a different rabbit, and then you click the other rabbit, and then you enter the game proper. <laughs> okay, so if you're under 18 or, you know, not able to watch, you know, don't have parental permission to watch any sort of artistic nudity, this is your last chance to leave, because I don't want to get in trouble. I have to keep saying this, because... Um, I am a sensitive individual who is... Who goes into convulsions at the sight of the naked human form? Well, actually, I made that up, but let's get started. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, um, it's a very odd little game. Uh, basically, if something's happening, it's because I'm clicking something, and it's uh, it is odd. <laughs> this is like that one scene in Snake Eater. I can't really, I, it's a very, I can't really describe what it is other than so, kind of trying to follow a surreal, uh, hidden object game where you're just mm -hmm. following a train of thought. You're just clicking things to try and trigger other things to lead you to find the, uh, goal yeah. portions of the game. The, uh, the journey is the reward, so to speak. Yeah. Um, this is, you know, there was obviously a, sh a pretty strong limit in terms of what they could actually do, mm. but they did a really good job of, uh... Yeah, this all seems really nice within the context of what it is. And there is some things that you can see here, this is a good example, where they actually tried to implement Alice in Wonderland theming. You've got the, uh, infamous two drinks. You drink one, you get big. You drink another, you get small. Um, the whole, uh, eat me, drink me thing. Yes. But you can't do anything with it. It's just a little aesthetic touch. Yeah, something for the eyes of the clever players. Yeah, you can just notice this sort of thing. Now, I am trying to do something specific here, but um, I am running this on a virtual machine, a Windows 95 virtual machine. Uh, so it can be a little bit uh, janky, a little bit buggy, since it can't quite emulate the speed properly. Yeah, and uh, Win 9X just really doesn't get along with modern uh, virtualization software in general, unless you're prepared to jump over some hoax. So, some of this stuff might seem to run a little quick. I can't say for sure if that was the uh, speed that it ran in the original mm. game. But, I'm running it at the, uh, deliberately at a slower resolution, a slower speed. I'm not trying to emulate any sort of fast speed, so sometimes it'll run a little slow. But it's better than it running way too fast. So I think what we've got is, um... Your goal is actually to collect uh, 52 playing cards, which you can find via interacting with the various uh, pieces in the game. And uh, there's a penis. Please don't uh, let your fragile minds be destroyed by it. But uh, clicking along, here's a card. I'm calling this... box cops right now on you. God, the second damn I... it! The second I saw the dick, uh, my head just ran pseudo RMRF on itself. Yeah. Um... The contents of my memory are being slowly burnt away. I'm kind of fortunate in this case that the game is run through a Windows 95 era picture compression, followed by a digital compression to a stream, so I feel like you're really pushing the dirty pixels here to actually see anything. So this is one of the cards, and this is a... Uh... It just says, Tears to Smile, and you can read. Basically, all the cards have a hint to uh, a different puzzle. So, hmm. effectively, the way the game works is you don't really need to find all of the puzzles. Just some of them, and then they'll hint at where you can find the rest of them. That's interesting. It's I must say, these people seem very nonplussed about whatever situation this is they're in. Yes. Well, it's... um. It's a thing. I mean, because obviously all this art is sort of mm -hmm. adopted from the artist himself, which you can actually see his credit down yeah. here. I'm not quite uh, sure how easy that is to read, but it does say Kuniyoshi Kaneko, 1975. Yeah, I can read it. Yeah, so... Dude's got a pretty nice style, honestly. Oh, I like it, his approach to coloring. It's a pretty uh, cool visual thing. Yeah. Um, you might notice that sometimes I click things and then I just end up booted out. That's because I'm trying to find mm -hmm. the thing you're supposed to click. Sometimes it doesn't uh, kick you out, sometimes it does. You've got to kind of be quick on the drawer. <laughs> but uh, there's this lighthouse honestly, that you can click on, and then you get some CG and a fish. 
Honestly, what those faces that remind me of more than anything is how in like Renaissance our art, everyone looked like they were trying to hold in a really bad fart. <laughs> but yeah, this is um, this is the this is like the majority of it because the cool thing is obviously all the pictures have had slight editing done to them, so you get to uh engage with the art in a way that you couldn't do. In real life, especially in 1991, yeah. you know that was that was a thing. You get a uh, butterfly. It's a. Uh, like, this is not really cool, and I'm sure that a lot of artists wish they could do something like this, like a piece you could actually interact with, work with, you know. Yeah. Like with this particular thing, uh, and see, I've got another card. I've got the three of spades, and the hint is like I know. Yes. I know a lot of pieces and installations do implement uh, interactivity in some way. Rarely do things like this happen. Yeah, well, this is just Alice Interactive Museum, and I feel that that is exactly yeah. what it is. Um, you'll notice that this text here is referring to what I just did previously, which was I clicked on the spyglass mm -hmm. and I ended up going to the lighthouse. So yeah, the puzzles sort of lead to other puzzles, which is really cool. Yeah, it's... Honestly, I'm liking this so far. Um, now... The way that this works, there are several rooms, and you basically move between them. I think there's six rooms, so we will uh, just make our way to a different room pretty soon. I'll just click a few other things. Like, usually it's got pretty logical stuff that you can just kind of work out. Like, there's the word stage here. When you click that, it sends you to a stage where it shows off a bunch of, well, artist work. Which I'm going to click through really quickly, because it's mostly the artist's explicate stuff, so... I don't want to get in too much trouble from YouTube over this one. <laughs> Saucy. But yeah, like, open the door, go through. Then it has these little hallways, which are rendered in 3D. Uh, well, like the rest of the museum, but... Um, this is kind of... Dungeon Polar 3D, so to speak? More basic 3D. Now, I'm going to try and look at one of these pictures. This game's really stable on Win95, but... Sometimes it crashes out when you look at these pictures, so I just look at one just as a demonstration that you can look at them. Uh, you cannot look outside to the left, I don't huh. think. It uh, just turns you around. That's but... some real nice crotch, hatch or cr crotch hatching, cross hatching in that one. Well, he's a proper artist. I think I've gone the wrong way. Oop, I killed yeah. the game. Hold on. Yep, it's dead. Uh, I will go back into the game. Oops. But... Illegal operation? Yeah, basically those particular rooms can cause crashes, and I'm not quite sure if it's um, the game itself, or if it's just a side effect of the virtual machine, but it only crashes in those scenes if you interact with a kind of, if you try and look around in those scenes, it doesn't really like that very much. For the rest of the game, it's decidedly stable, so it should be fine. We'll get back into it quickly. Um, and this is where I can point out that the game doesn't actually save a single thing. It has no save... Uh, states at all. So it has no inventory puzzles and no doors that you can unlock in one area by triggering something in something else. Which, by it's kind of a positive coincidence in, in a way, because it means that it lacks that frustration that a lot of games of a similar type had. Because it never demands that you get 15 different items from 12 different rooms and then apply them in different ways in order to open a door somewhere else. Everything is very self-contained and you never have to worry that you've uh, somehow missed something somewhere else which has caused you to be unable to complete the game. So we'll just jump back into the museum and we'll get back into it. Yes, the music plays fine in this room, but it breaks at some point. I'm not quite sure how it works. Oh, the table. We didn't do the table yet. Okay. So there is a handful of actual uh, puzzles that are closer to actual game puzzles. This one's pretty obvious if you've ever done, uh, I don't know, basic puzzles. This is a really common one. It's the... Uh, mm -hmm. You have to connect the letters so that the same... There's only one letter change between the letters, and then... You connect them all together, and then you win a prize, which is you get a card.
and this is a uh, this one takes you to a special uh, room. You can only get to this room via this little puzzle. And hmm. we're not going to spend too long in here because it's kind of tedious. But you actually get this very small flashlight. And you get to control the flashlight and try and locate the, uh, I guess, the trigger point as such. It's kind of like the other puzzles, except you're clicking it based on... Yeah based on not being able to see where you're going. So it's kind of extremely frustrating. It's one of the more annoying parts of the game. Because you just sort of have to hope for the best, really. And I think I've lost the light, so now I'm in a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, hopefully we well, can work something out here. We... Did it done or is it glitched? No, this is... um. I've accidentally lost the uh, light. It's not glitched out. It's... Uh, there we go. Found it. I managed to transition to a different room. Or a part of one. So it's okay. We got it. Basically, you kind of got to click... To transition between the paintings here, you have to click the edge of the painting. But if you lose the light location, you're going to have trouble finding the edge of the painting. But this bit is kind of very frustrating so we're gonna we're gonna do our best to just get out of this area get to the exit if we can find it cuz uh... there is an exit we just have to find the door that says exit but we will find it there it is we're in the wrong slide let me move back down we just gotta find this exit doohickey where'd he go there we go and we managed to make it to the exit. That area has five cards in it. Good luck finding them. I'm not going to do it. We're done with that area. We're never going back. This one is a little less crashy, this corridor. Um, but we're, we're still... Not we're not going to go through any more of these corridors. It's a... It's a pain to click them, so we won't be doing those. Yeah don't really want to click that picture because I know what's in it. Um, if you want to see that picture, get the game yourself. Uh, it'll cost about $500 to $600 US if you want a copy of this game. It, Market change. Yeah. It's one of the most expensive PC games around uh, on the secondary market. I don't genuinely have any idea why uh, other than it's very unusual. Uh, Amazon has some copies listed for 50 or $60 US. Since it has traditionally commanded a very high price, I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that. But It has a relatively... Did it like have a low print run or something? It had a pretty low print run, that's correct. Uh, yeah, that drives up the uh, price range is like nothing else. So, I don't know. If you can find it cheap and you can be certain it's a real copy of the game... Uh, go for it. How pleasant. Ah, delightful. Okay, now I think this trick is one of the, uh... This game gets a little dark in places, um... No, I don't really know why. But it's certainly a, a little bit of an experience. And this could be another puzzle. I'm not sure. I've never actually tried to solve this one. Because music puzzles are not something that I'm particularly good at. Yeah, they're kind of irritating. But you can click this guy and he can do this. So much fun.
I really hope it doesn't want me to repeat this entire tune, because there's no freaking way I'm going to succeed at doing that. <laughs> Fortunately, you don't actually need to achieve anything in this game outside of finding one particular card. Because there is one specific card in this game that tells you how to beat the game. And that's the only one you need to complete. So that's, that's handy. So you're basically just searching for cards until you finally get the card that just flat out tells you, alright, we've had your fun with you, so get out of here. Yeah, well, let's um, let's go to the correct place here. and uh, Well, not to get the card. I know where the card is, but let's just find... Yes, this is the correct room. I'm just trying to show you what you need to actually accomplish at the end of the day. Essentially, what you need to do to, to leave the museum is to gain access to this particular door. It has these, uh, these cards in it, which are not super useful, but these cards actually relate to <clears throat> what happens after you clear this room. So that's not particularly helpful right now. In order to beat this area, you need to pick the correct setting. This is like a, you know, a safe. So there is a set of things that you have to enter in the correct order in order to leave. I do uh, actually have... It seems like a... Yes? Uh, it seems like brute forcing wouldn't be very easy. No, there's, a, I believe, five or six things you have to enter in the correct order in order for that door to open. So, hmm. uh, good luck brute forcing that one. Is it always the same, or does it? It is. It was always the same. I happen to have a copy yeah. of it written down here if I need to use it Oop. for some reason. But I think we can figure it out on our own. And yeah, there's a lot of little interaction things in here. This is very typical of the me multimedia sort of game era that this game exists in. This one, you get to make like a little. Bizarre fake little composite that generates an image. Uh, there's only, f what, four, four things with four things with two different types of things. But, you know, whatever. You get like a little picture. I think one of them might give you a card if you get a specific combination right. The sort of flair that this particular title has. It's got all this uh, very unusual stuff. You get a menu. Um, you get a menu. Let me find the, uh... uh some of these actually sound pretty good. Yeah, it tells you, uh... You've got some, like, little mm -hmm. history stuff, apparently. Hmm. Apparently it's one of, uh, his... Lewis Carroll's favorite dishes, possibly. Yeah. Yeah, and you get to click things. It's a very bizarre little title when it does stuff like the rabbit in a man suit. Yeah. That's just pretty good. Haven't had it in forever. Thank you. And to be honest, after making trashy hamburgers for weeks, would probably be a pretty nice change, honestly. <laughs> yeah, and you get to, uh... And it's a check, eh? You get to write a check. Because you do. Here we have a picture of a Dale Cooper, another Dale Cooper. Um, I have no idea who those are, and, uh, someone, and in a very mad Elaine Marley. I do like to let the music run a little bit, because it's, uh, some odd little compositions. A bit of fun. Yeah. They're, uh, they work rather well in the context of the game. Yeah, you get to, uh, just weird stuff constantly happens. How do I trigger these rabbits? I think I can't do any more with those rabbits. Yeah, the, uh, the rabbits, they don't really... Yeah. It's stuff that just happens. Mm-hmm. 
and then you get to go into a forest. Could all this be a complex metaphor for the fact that the artist is a terrible organization? Possibly. I think you can get the cat to talk to you, I can't quite remember how. Or at least he'll talk if I trigger some other event. Oh, it's another Alice reference, isn't it? Yes it is, I believe it's a Cherishire cat. But, he's just literally a cat in this one. But he is invisible, so... Yeah. There is that. And then there's this painting, which I can't make sense of this painting, maybe someone else can. Oh, there goes the fish. If you'd like to learn about wine, there is some information about reds. <laughs> I... yeah. That's a good suggestion, because I'm sure you would probably need some of that to actually solve this game without a guide. The thing... I, the way I look at this game, all the individual bits are not really supposed to be solved in the traditional sense. You're not just supposed to... Because nothing is a prerequisite for anything else. You know, the whole game, you just sort of click your way through. Hey, so cool! So it's kind of one of those just like, goes, so it's kind of like one of those that like, goes somewhere and see where you end up cases, rather than actually yes. someone might from the start. I, very much so. It's more of a stream mm. of consciousness <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah, it seems like it. And uh, considering the artwork they're trying to show off, it fits really nicely. Like, these pieces are all fairly surreal in overall tone, yet all strangely a commonplace in terms of what elements are, so having a framing device that fits that works really well. Yeah. And it, it does do its uh, thing. Okay, hopefully we haven't gotten stuck here, because there are some points where finding the... Uh, I'll call it the escape trigger, because basically the game has a few essentially uh, hidden rooms that you can make your way to, like the one that we've stumbled onto here, which you can uh, find your way into, but usually only have a small hotspot to actually escape through. Ah, there we go. And we may have made it out of this one. Yes, I believe we have. So it's quite a... it's an interesting thing. Sometimes you get a little stuck, but... It's nothing some uh, rapid mouse clicking around the environment won't solve. I'm not even sure if I've been this way before. Are there a lot of points where the hot spots aren't very clear? Um... There are plenty of points where you're not 100% sure where you're supposed to be going. Uh... It's kind of a bother, but what can you do? <laughs> um, you know, like 1991, there are way more frustrating point-and-click games than this. I mean, this is this is unbelievably forgiving. You can't actually get stuck anywhere. There is a solution point for everything. I take it you can't die or anything. You. You can't die and get stuck. You can actually get killed. But we haven't gotten there yet, and it's only at the very end of the game. And it's just used as a way to stop you from brute forcing through the finale of the title. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, if I can remember how to do it, is access the game's largest and most complete secret room. which will be a little tricky, but hopefully we can manage it. Basically, there is a s big set of secret rooms that you can uh, get into, and this one contains the card that has the, uh, the combination to the safe. Hey, there's an Alice reference. Yes, there you go. 
the uh, Mad Hatter sort of thing. That was the room mm. that we just entered, but the only way to enter it properly is uh, you have to do a different combination of uh, clicking, which sounds frustrating. It well could be frustrating. I don't find it frustrating. I find the act of uh, sort of mm -hmm. negotiating your way through uh, a lot of fun. Okay, so we've done it. I've, I've managed to click the correct order of things. And now we are in the uh, secret room, which has you collecting a uh, series of colored baubles in order to complete the, the level. I know this seems really confusing. It probably is. I've done this several times because I just find this game incredibly interesting. So the perspective here is interesting. Yeah, this one uses the uh, s the ability of CG to render environments. Uh, it uses it. In I think that it wouldn't. Yeah. No, sorry. Well, you can't use like traditional art in the same way they've used yeah. CG. Very particularly. Like, for example, the uh, angle we just saw is only really possible when something fused to all the geometry work for you. It would probably be really hard to draw out because you couldn't really see things from exactly that angle in real life because your body occupies space. Yes. And well, then you also got to think about people like M.C. Escher, who routinely did 3D distortions on yeah. paper. The the issue really is with that sort of thing. The amount of time it would take to draw yeah. each consecutive angle is very difficult thing. Uh -huh. Art is by, a, by nature a very individual dependent thing, so what might be simple for one person might be incredibly difficult for another. I think I've got to click one of these particular cards. But if I don't, it'll be fine. Maybe it's when she draws the aces? Dang it. I think I got it, but I missed it when it came up. There we go. Ha! -ha. <laughs> the lost door. There you go. That's the combination that you require if you want to finish the game. So, I have it previously written down, and I will just use the previous combination. But yeah, that's the, uh... There you go. That's actually how you get through to the, uh, the next area. I've glossed over a, a lot of elements of this game, so there are things that you could uh, still look at if someone wanted to look into this game. But, yeah, we'll go to the door. I, I am here to sort of take this game to its, to its relative finale, because there isn't actually, as far as I'm aware, a video of anyone finishing this game on uh, YouTube or ever. So, we're going to finish this thing. Even if we're not going to get all 52 cards, which I think is actually 53 because the card we picked up just then was the Joker. So, we is will... Is there a walkthrough or anything of, that, of this game online? Yes, there is. I know someone else has found all the cards and uploaded uh, text information on, on what you have to click in what order. But there is no, as far as I'm aware, video of someone finishing this game. So we're going to finish it. Today, exclusively, Interesting. for GC9X, I'm going to finish this game. Because, whatever. We're, we're pioneers of uh, 1991 uh, computer-generated imagery interactive museum games. Mm -hmm. I wonder what the end of the road has in store for us. It's a good thing I found that card that tells me what to do at the end, because I would have forgotten what to do again. I always forget. <laughs> anyway, let's click this, and we'll enter the combination. Which was three, four, five, six, seven, king, rabbit. And there we go! We are now in the hardest part of the game to get to, unless you use a walkthrough, in which case you could just get the combination immediately, but we didn't, because we're better than that. And our reward is boobs? Um, it's more paintings, well, 
it is paintings that you don't get in the rest of the the game, as far as I remember. So that's kind of cool. You mm -hmm. get to see this. Uh, can't actually click them. I think if we move forward, we might get a better look at one of them. But yeah, you can't yeah. you can't actually click these ones. They're just on the walls. But you get some cool. Chop stuff. off your head. And you get some terrifying voiceovers, and a decapitated head. You know, all chop off your head. All positives. Yeah, this is all a uh, highly supportive text. The uh, the walls are obviously on our side. So yeah, we get our heads chopped off. That's excellent. We get to climb up this ladder. Now this is going to be a little bit chunky because you can tell that. This is not really what a directive was built for, but that's okay. Hey, it could be worse. I could for for every one relatively good pre-rendered mist clone that a director, there are like a hundred really bad ones. Yeah, and that's one of the things that impresses me about this game, considering that this is one of the first, if not the first, uh, macromedia point-and-click games. Even though it's kind of borderline a game. Oh, no, so. oh so since nobody's made the joke yet, I give my life not for honor, but for you. Or wait, was I muted last time I said that? Possibly. Yeah. <sighs> now I may screw up here. Cause... Um, is someone reading into the mic? No, that is actually from the game itself. Oh. Weird. Because what happens here is the ground starts to fall, and you have to click the ground before it falls away. Which, fortunately, since I've set the speed to uh, uh, not particularly fast, we might be okay. But if you leave the speed at sort of a emulating a higher speed, it tends to move a little quick. Yeah, I'm guessing this game is probably really heavily CPU dependent for speed, which might be a problem because the simulated environment is still probably a lot faster than what it'd really be expecting. I, uh, I, I failed that last click. So we're back here. And this is what I mean by you can't die, but you can. This is the, uh, only segments in the game where you sort of enter any sort of fail state. Fortunately, it just kicks you back to the start of the segment, and you just have to try again. Yeah. But hopefully, we won't have to repeat it too many times, because I know it's not exciting to watch a person fail to click Falling Stone. But I'm impressed that this game even had an ending. Because it didn't need what it has here. This just sort of exists as an extra thing to mess around with. But yeah, basically you gotta click forward and then you gotta click the ground so that you don't die. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a little bit tricky, but that's okay. We can handle this. We've got the power. Alright, it's the elevator! We're free! <laughs> This this really sort of just looks like a, a sort of a like a pre-rendered take on something like Dungeon Master, mm -hmm. except yeah. with this, less interesting. This really does remind me of something like, say, Fantasy Star or Winx Works. Okay, how do I shut this thing? I've done it many times before, uh, at least once. Let's. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it is that button. And then you get attacked by the skeleton hand. Because you're always attacked by a skeleton hand for some reason. Yes. And then you just sort of die. Um, I think the solution is you have to click a different button. We'll figure it out. This is the experience of playing this game when you get to the Go end. Back a moment. Uh becomes kind of a nuisance. Alright. You just double click the button and we get rid of the skeleton hand. Now... Dang it, we pressed the wrong button and it booted us back. The fiends! Uh, 
we tried spades yet? No, we, that's the one that didn't work. Oh. Should we just go up? How about uh, clubs? Clubs? We may as well try clubs okay. next. Oh, clubs, I believe, is the one that works. And then the elevator well, hey, floods. popular vote wins. Yeah. Then the elevator fills with water. Yeah. Um, not sure if you can drown here. I have no interest in repeating this segment again, so we'll just uh, watch the fish come out, and then we'll swim out of here. The game pauses for a while. Hey, it's after dark. Because it is loading the uh, next area. Because again, I'm not running this on high speed mode. This is running at the uh, slower, closer to the system's actual run speed mode. So we get this. Uh, what uh, what virtualization program are you running this through? This is on VMware. Which VMware? Okay. As far as I have been able to find, it's the only VM virtual system that really can handle a decent amount of Windows 95 sort of era games. Yeah, I feel like VMware is generally the program to go to if you're trying to do something anything older than Windows XP. Because VirtualBox used to support Windows 98, but then they removed the guest edition support for that, which means your video drivers aren't going to work. Yes, so. and that's a very serious problem. So, this is very slowly gradiating itself to another color. I believe once it successfully does that, we will get the ending segment of the game. Which, uh, is kind of our reward for escaping a skeleton monster. If I remember correctly, if you yeah. run this at a speed that's too high, it gradiates through this segment in about one second. So I'm not sure which one's correct. Couldn't tell you, but I'm okay. This is much less frustrating than the falling fl mm -hmm. floor skeleton monster. So, that's cool. I can deal with this. Yeah, I think we've had enough skeleton monsters for a lifetime in the past five minutes. Yeah, it was too spooky for me, am I right? And it was spooky, it was spooky, it was crappy, it was spooky. And there's the, uh, my things got shown back up, my cursor. So, does that mean we've loaded the next segment? Should I click the button? Oh, here we go. We've got letterbox, and now we get this very odd little bit where we sort of click through an environment. It's not playing in real time, this is me clicking it, and it's just moving along one frame at a time. Okay, now we have three colors. To be honest, I have no idea what to do with this segment. <laughs> <laughs> All this segment really tells me is that the developers of this discovered how 3D Bryce works. I, yeah. This is, this sort of landscape is amazing. This is, if it's 1990 and you need a 3D landscape, kabam! Done. So. It looks just like the texture boot splash. Let's, uh, let's go by popular vote again. Guys, what color do you want? Green. Green? Well, shit, I was gonna vote yeah, blue. Green. Uh, well, we got two for green and one for blue. I'll click... Yep, you uh, outvoted me. I'll click green. We get some crickets. Which immediately stop because I click the button. And then from green, we ride over the pastures to the cat. And we miss the cat. I probably should have clicked the cat, but I failed to click the cat. So we'll keep going. Ah, and you get this very nice looking, uh, what I think is a pallet rotation? It could be. And that's the ending. Congratulations, everyone. We beat it. By drowning, I think. Hmm. I wonder, do the other flaws do anything different? Or substantially different? Uh... The only way to solve that would be to go back and, uh... Go red and yeah. blue and see what happened. That mean... That'd mean more skeletons, though. Well, I got some time. I'm willing to go back and try and go through one more. It's not a very long thing. It's up here. 
Oh look, Englishing by David. Congratulations, David. You Englished the hell out of this. <laughs> that voice. Uh. Great job, David. <laughs> it's, I love that. It's not even like. It's just like, well, David did it. <laughs> Doesn't even get a last name. It's just that guy from Counting, David. Good guy, that one. He's a great Englisher. Yeah. I want to be quote. I want to be credited as an Englishing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's delightful. Mm. All right. Well, we're back. Um, as you see, the game loops around. Uh. Okay. That was a weird picture to click, but the game clicks around, and uh, that's it. Like. You get the credits, and then you get back into the game itself. It doesn't exit on its own. Um, yeah, so I accidentally missed the slipper, so you guys will see what happens if you don't click the slipper. Yeah, you get the heartbeat, and it's creepy. It's essentially the, uh, the long and short of it. I like how the game's just like totally tame in terms of the uh, horror content for the most part, but then you just like get in and just like, ah, it's got like out of nowhere. Yeah, there is there is some very unnerving things that I didn't show off. There's a couple of other um ah. uh creepy elements. Like there's basically a seance where you summon a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> like you tear a hole in the wall and then this waiter just comes out and he's like, Hey. Hmm. Uh Ah, there we go. Managed to get it going. There's the bloody eggs. The blood. The blood is everywhere. The horrifying blood. And then the skeleton hand kills you. Because that's that's what happens. So is that supposed to be your blood, or...? I... could not even begin to tell you. I, I kind of like this game a little bit more than Elzone and Gadget, because it, it's kind of more interesting in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's from a very odd time period of games. Because this game yeah. doesn't, it doesn't try and, it doesn't have the, uh, the pretensions of being an art game. It's just kind of, it is an art game. Like, I don't but think... But it isn't overly boastful about it, so to speak? No, yeah, it's not particularly boastful. It's more like, can we make a game, can we make art? And, uh, we'll make it interactive. And, uh, that'll be it. It'll be an interactive art. Like, uh, think about it. This kind of, like, 1991, it would have been contemporaries with, like, uh, say... Radius 3, probably? Uh, Super Mario World? All that? Yeah. I think Turkin 3 would have just came out at the time or something like that. I mean, compare it to those sort of games, it's like, like, wow, that's a, a really daring thing to make. Yeah, night and day difference, honestly. I don't think we can drown here. I'm just gonna see if we can, just quickly. I'm just gonna let these fish swim around a bit, cause... Uh, Look at the fish! That's some fish, you know? That's great. It's like an after dark. It does have that feeling to it a little bit, that, uh... particular... feel. And there's lots of little, uh, animated bits. I mean, like, these sort of animated things are obviously not impressive to... us coming to view this game from the year 2015. But this game was, you know, unbelievably, like, w what is it now? Like, like literally 24 years ago? Something like that. Let me uh, get an example. We're back here at the uh, end screen. So here we go. We're going to click the blue path and see what happens in the exciting yeah. second conclusion to Alice Interactive Museum. All right, we're clicking the blue one. Here we go. I guess I better watch this, huh? Yeah. And we get the same bugs. And, uh, the terrain appears to be a different, yep, definitely different terrain. If the cat shows up again, let's try and make sure to click on that one. Uh-huh. Oh, no, we've got the armadillo. I'll click the armadillo. Was and now... there an armadillo at Alice? I think there is an armadillo right. of some description. I know there was that one that was 3D O game Bob played a while ago, and these guys made some 3D O games, so 
And there is a rock formation that we get to click on, so this is different. So you, you do get something different here. Who mm. said the rocks? Well, there are what appear to be actual rocks now, so I'm going to click on one. We are now bouldering through. Well, then they, they get suspended in midair. My goodness. And now we're in a desert. Okay. Well, that's, uh... This is real. This is, uh... Yeah, this... Welcome to... The Sahara? Uh, so we went from very large rocks to smaller rocks to a bunch of rocks that are so fine they coat the earth. Up oh, and then I, we approach the water, and we get in the water, and it plays the same credits. So, yeah, I think you get a slightly different... Uh... uh thing before the ending. Yeah, yeah, the conclusion stays the same, but the way you get there is different. It well, that's alright. If you finish the game multiple times, you can at least have a little bit of a different uh, yeah. thing. Besides, it kind of fits the oh, it kind of fits the bigger picture with how this game does things in that regard. And hey, red, green, blue. That this game beats uh, Mass Effect Three to the punch by over twenty years. So yeah. there you go. This red, green, blue. Same choices. Same end result. It has a better English or... Wait, this is a story?